Fans fell in love with Frankie Knuckles as the pioneer of house music. Here to chat about his legacy and the important work he's done for the LGBT community is social justice writer Terrence Chappelle. Terrence, thanks for coming on the program. Thank you so much for having me. I can't believe that he would have been 65 coming up on this weekend. It's been a few, uh, well, five or six years now since uh, Frankie no, passed definitely. away. For those that don't know his legacy a little bit, uh, introduce us a little bit to Frankie Knuckles. Definitely. Well, this Saturday he would have been 65, and he is so Chicago. He is known as, and coined as the godfather of house music. And his birthplace was at the warehouse, which was established in 1977. And it's actually a 10 minute walk from here because mm -hmm. it was located at 206 South Jefferson. And the warehouse was like this underground club. And it became a hub and destination for LGBT people of color, particularly gay black men who were, you know, just kind of shut out of their households, who were kind of condemned from their communities. And during that time, during the 1970s, established in 1977, and during the 1970s, you know, gay black men and people of color within the LGBT community were discriminated against. Mm -hmm. We had to show multiple forms of ID. We were often denied entrance. So this really represented like a sanctuary for us. And Frankie's work, I mean, it in, its influence is far and wide. I mean, I know he would, his work was, uh, he went to Europe a lot and did some did. work over there. And I mean, he really was a trendsetter in this genre, if not, like you said, the start of it all. 100%. You can see his influence. Um, it's a genre of electronic dance music, but even like EDM and what you see like Coachella has um, influences of house music, um, even pop cult and pop music, um, R&B. You can all trace it back to Frankie. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, he's known as his godfather, but he did so much for the community and so much for the culture at a time when we really didn't see ourselves um, in the narrative, in the media, or even represented in, um, in clubs and nightlife environments. Yeah, you mentioned Jefferson. The street's named after him. He has, he has an honorary stretch from like Madison down to Jackson, uh, where the club uh, once was. You, even in 2020, though, I think a lot of the things that he was pushing for, we could still look to him and uh, his, uh, the things that he did, providing safe spaces, not only for gay people, but uh, people of color as well. That is something that is still vitally important today. 100% definitely. Um, it's, you know, we've made a lot of progress within the community, um, within the LGBT community at large. However, you do have reported incidents of, um, myself included, of not feeling very welcomed. Mm -hmm. um, and then Stonewall, which is a nonprofit based in the UK, did this study and they found that 51% of LGBT people of color feel discriminated against um, within their own L local LGBT community. Which is shocking. It's supposed to be this welcoming catch all community for, for people that um, don't have, you know, maybe have a different background and it's supposed to be this welcoming place, mm -hmm. but a lot of times it isn't. It isn't. And so, again, we made progress, yeah. but, that, but that just tells us we need to continue to sustain these safe spaces um, so people can uh, kind of, because that's also where history thrives and that's where you can kind of trace where um, everything kind of begun as well. Yeah, we have this debate mm -hmm. often is are our gay bars going to be going away a little bit more as it becomes more socially acceptable to well, be gay? I hope but, not. I, right, exactly. <laughs> no, there's, not, no. there still are those spaces for people mm -hmm. to be themselves. All right, so the 65th, his birthday, or would have turned 65 this weekend, a lot of events going on for it. There is. So, um, well, on Sunday, what's going on? On January 19th at Rebuild Foundation, the Stony Island Arts Bank, um, located at 6760 South Stony Island, will be hosting um, the Power of Liberatory Spaces. And there and DJ Doreen Powell, which is this music historian, he's awesome, he's also a house music DJ, will be choosing the albums from um, the Frankie Knuckles um, vinyl collection, and he's gonna be hosting and moderating this um, panel discussion around how he created these safe spaces. Yeah. And then I'll definitely be attending that. Then on Saturday, also on Sunday later on that night, if you wanna go out, have some fun, there'll also be Queen going on. Some fun. Uh, <laughs> some fun. Some fun, I'll yeah. I'll see you Queen's at Queen. <laughs> <laughs> I'll definitely be there. But, um, and so that, and so it's really gonna be, and they're doing that in partnership with the Frankie Knuckles Foundation. Foundation. I definitely want to mention them. They, um, the Frankie Knuckles Foundation does a lot of work to kind of globalize um, house music, but they also do a lot of research and um, and helping LGBT homeless um, kids, also diabetes, because we know for that's sure. where he um, passed away from, and also his AIDS research and prevention as well. Terrence, thanks for stopping by. I want to give the plug really quickly. If you're looking to join in on the conversation, celebrate the life of Frankie Knuckles, head over to rebuildnashfoundation.org. And before I toss it over to DJ Mustafa Rocks, Family friend of yours, Frankie Knuckles, did you? Yeah, fam he was a family friend. My brothers used to work at the power plant, and Frankie used to give me records all the time. Wow. And let me tell you, he did my mother's wedding, and when people found out Frankie was DJing her wedding, it was a line down the block <laughs> to get into the reception. Wow. The biggest party in town that night. Yes.